Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. I am Sumaya Abubakar, taking you through the stories trending online that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today. Outrage over Nigeria's 1,411 delegates to COP28 summit. Former president, VPs, others get 13.8 billion naira upkeep allowance from 2024 budget. ASU rejects the federal government's student loan scheme over psychological trauma it will have on students. And U.S. Embassy says over 180,000 Nigerians interviewed in 2023. On top of what's trending today, we have the federal government has come under fire over the huge number of Nigeria's delegation to the ongoing COP28 climate change summit in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Nigeria was reported to have sent 1,411 delegates, the third highest at the summit. Nigeria has played the high number of the Nigerian delegates to the conference amidst the biting cost of living crisis largely blamed on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration's policies, including the petrol subsidy removal and the currency floating. The presidency, however, clarified that of the 1,411 delegates, those funded by the federal government across ministries, departments and agencies were less than 100. Commenting on the issue, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in this year's election, Atikwa Abubakar, accused President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of turning the climate change conference into an Owambe party at a time Nigerians were demanding poverty and accountability. Atiku, in a statement on Sunday, December 3rd, by his media advisor, Paul Ibe, alleged that Tinubu neither understands nor appreciates the enormity of the economic ruin that the country is facing. In the same vein, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 elections, Peter Obi, described the large number of Nigeria's contingents as a waste of resources. In a post on his ex-handle, he said the vast majority of the Nigerian delegates were either non-relevant civil servants or relations, friends and hangers on the, of the high government officials, most of whom hardly understand or have anything to do with climate change. He said the huge contingent was out of public expense at a time most Nigerians can hardly afford food and basic needs as a result of economic hardship. A netizen commented, President Tinubu is now showing us how he will build Nigeria the way they said that he built Lagos. Action speaks louder than word. Another said, and how does climate change relate with the fact that price of things are going very high every second? Another person said, this is part of his failed economic reforms and his pretend renewed hope of deceitfulness. Moreover, it is unfortunate that his mandate is poisonous to him and will not be beneficial to him and his cycles. It will also neither be helpful, useful or productive to Nigerian society. Next on what's trending, we have the federal government has set aside about 13.8 billion naira for the maintenance of former president, vice president, chief of state, chief of general staff, retired heads of service, permanent secretaries, and retired heads of government agencies and parastatals in the fiscal year 2024. The beneficiaries include the former president Olusha Gunobasanjo, Goodluck Jonathan, and Muhammad Buhari, as well as ex vice president Atiku Abubakar Namadi Sambo and Professor Yemi Osibanjo, ex military heads of state General Yakubu Gawan, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, General Ibrahim Babangida, and a former chief of general staff Commodore Ebitu Ukiwe, retired, and to gain from uh, the windfield of this. In addition, 1 trillion naira has been set aside for public service wage adjustments for government, ministries, departments and agencies, including arrears of promotion and salary increases, as well as payments of severance benefits and minimum wage related adjustments. The entitlements of past presidents, leaders of the state and vice presidents, chief of the general staff will cost about 2.3 billion naira, while retired heads of the service, permanent secretaries and professors will cost about 10.5 billion naira. In Etizen said, sometimes I feel we are refugees in our own country. What is happening? A guy said, no matter what they do, they know the citizens are too docile to react, so they keep doing as they like. A lady added, we also need upkeep allowance as understanding citizens. Indeed.
Next on what's trending, we have the academic staff of Union of University, the ASU, Bauchi Zone, has rejected the student loan scheme of the federal government, noting that non-refundable grants should be given to Nigerian students instead of loans. The ASU Bauchi Zonal Coordinator, Lazarus Mike Ogoro, disclosed this while speaking at a scholarship for indigent students program held at the Abu Bakar Tafawa Balewa University, ATBU Bauchi, on Saturday, December 2nd. He said, the question is, who will pay the loan? What is the fate of those who cannot assess it? The psychological trauma the students will be subjected to due to the loan while still in studies will affect their performance negatively. The fact that they will graduate with a loan of 4 million naira and above without the capacity to pay back will be another psychological torture for the students. Furthermore, those who cannot access the loan due to the stringent conditions attached virtually means dropping out of school. Currently, in view of the hike in school fees or charges in public universities all over the country, many students have not been able to resume. ASU Bauchizun is working on getting the statistics of students who may likely drop out of school at the end of the current session with the period and hope of making the government review its decision on the issue of the loan and replacement it will grant. Now, the ASU Zonal Coordinator stressed that as they teach the students in the classroom, they notice quite a number who are distressed due to the very harsh economic realities of the country. Inetizen said, instead of student loan, create jobs for these students, but somebody wants to cash out. A lady opined, the people who actually need this loan will never be able to access it. This loan thing is yet another scheme to embezzle funds. I stand with ASU on this one. A guy wrote, the scheme is really a bad idea. It will throw more families into debt and governments will also use it as means to steal more funds. Next on what's trending, we have President Bola Menetulubu has said that his government is planning to deploy a fleet of 100 electric buses as part of efforts to drive the nation toward a more sustainable and environmentally friendly future. The president disclosed this while speaking with stakeholders and investors on the Nigerian carbon market and electric buses rollout program on Saturday, December 2nd in Dubai on the fringes of the COP28 climate summit. Tinubu stated that the strategic initiative aims to significantly reduce Nigeria's carbon footprint and modernize the country's transport system as part of a large effort to position Nigeria and Africa as the leading frontiers of green manufacturing and industrialization. The president announced that the appointment of Mr. Zaka Dedechi, executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, and Mr. Lahiru Salisu, director general of the National Council on Climate Change, to co-chair the Nigerian Carbon Market Activation Plan to spearhead the plan. According to the statement by his spokesman, Ajiri Ngalale, Tinubu said, this initiative stands as a testament to our dedication to environmental stewardship as clearly exemplified through our collaboration with the African Carbon Market Initiative. A netizen commented, that electric bus cannot survive third mainland bridge traffic. Where will they charge it? Another person said, where will they charge it? The biggest problem Nigeria needs to solve is the power issues, not electric buses. Someone else said an oil producing state approving electric cars just so you could receive grants for encouraging climate change. Those electric buses wouldn't be produced by innocent motors, but some unknown Chinese automotive makers. When are we going to have people with brains making favorable policies for Nigerians? Now let's take a short break and when we come back, you will see some new tactics that some bad Nigerians have developed. Welcome back. It's News Feed. Now, NDLEA uncovers meds opioid consignments in jeans, hems, dolls, and buttons. 
Now, crooked attempts by drug syndicates to export illicit substances, including various quantities of methamphetamine and opioids concealed in hems of new jeans trousers, dolls, buttons, local soap, and tins of Milo beverage to Europe, United Arab Emirates, and Asia have been thwarted by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, at some courier firms in Lagos. A statement released on Sunday, December 3rd, said some of the consignments intercepted by NDLEA operatives of the Directorate of Operation and General Investigation at Korea Houses in Lagos include Tramadol 225 mg concealed in hems of new jeans trousers heading to Cyprus, shipments of cannabis sativa hidden in heads of dolls going to Dubai, the UAE, Sachet of Tramadol 225 mg buried in tins of Milo beverage going to UAE and another set of same drug hidden in local soap also going to UAE as well as a consignment of metafetamine concealed in buttons heading to Hong Kong. Baba Femi said a shipment of another illicit substance coming from Florida, USA was equally intercepted at a courier firm, which, while the recipient, Daniel Oge, was tracked by the NDLEA officers and arrested at 5 Akem Shitu Street at Jao Estate, Lagos, on Friday, 24th November 2023. Inetizen wrote, This person have no fear, though. They use DHL. Another said, These people will now make sending things abroad more difficult. Why, do? And a lady opined, This is serious negative creativity now so what's trending we have a 47 year old man arrested for killing his wife months after they relocated to the uk a nigerian man abodunde david olubumi 47 of Exning road is said to appear at suffolk magistrate court after being charged with murder over the death of his wife oweye taiwo moreni keji it is reported that the incident happened on Tuesday, November 28, and police officers were called to their property after reports of a serious incident. Taiwo, aged in her 40s, was pronounced dead at the scene. According to court documents, the suspect is charged with killing his wife. It is reported that David and his wife had relocated to the UK from Nigeria earlier in the year. A Twitter handle uh, user, Tona Reyes, alleges that Taiwo had filed a restraining order against her husband before the tragic incident occurred. The deceased brother, Owoye Alex Adikule, in a post on Facebook, reports that Taiwo left behind three children who have been handed over to the social services in the UK. An artisan said, after three children, you didn't restrain him in Nigeria where you have family but less than a year in uk you quickly restrained it is a pity some men allow themselves to get carried away by their emotions violence is never an option another person wrote as a nigerian man if you're not ready to be supportive with the children and chores when you relocate please do not you cannot relocate your family and expect the woman alone to be living the life of a single mother while married because you are used to being served by your wife in nigeria while you cross your leg if not marriages will continue to crash abroad a guy opined i think most marriages in africa isn't of love and purity but sprout from survival and selfish interest so what's trending we've got the united states embassy in nigeria said it has interviewed over 180,000 nigerians in addition to 30,000 students who applied for visas to other country this year the head mr david green made this disclosure on sunday december 3rd during an interview with the news agency of nigeria in abuja he also assured visa applicants of the mission's commitment to tackling all visa-related hitches. According to him, issues related to visas would fully become a thing of the past, saying the mission is doing everything within its power to tackle such challenges. He said in his words, when it comes to visas specifically, well, of course, it is a simple fact. The demand for visa appointments outnumbers the supply. So those appointments are available and we are doing everything that we can do to address that gap. What folks do not know is this year we have interviewed more than 150,000 Nigerians. He added, this is an addition to about 30,000 students. Hundreds of thousands of students have had the opportunity to seek visas from the U.S. Inetizen commented, and how many were approved? 2K, profiting of people's circumstances. 
Another person wrote, this one is small. Wait till Canada and UK release the number of applications that they have received from Nigerians in 2023. And someone said, the real question is how many were given the visas? Indeed. And lastly, onto a funny video of a little kid who doesn't believe in exercise. Take a look. It's like, no, I'm going to just sit down here and relax. And that is all on Newsfeed on Trust TV. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Bye.